the first paragraph of The Presence of the Past, Rupert condenses the theory into a slogan which could be shouted in a theater or a parade. It's that things are as they are because they were as they were. And that, in essence, is what this theory is saying. Well, now notice that this is a, a, as conservative a point of view as one could possibly imagine. Because <laughs> what is being proposed in the theory of uh, the morphogenetic field is a revisioning of causality. The second book, which uh, if you haven't read it, uh, you're certainly missing an intellectual adventure. It's like a chance to read the Principia when the person who wrote it uh, is striding around town giving lectures. Uh, it's really a rare intellectual adventure. I haven't known that kind of excitement reading uh, theoretical biology since discovering L.L. L. White when I was uh, a kid. But what is being proposed is a fundamental revisioning of how events happen in the world. And uh, very fundamental to the performance of science is the notion of experiment. And experiment rests on the relatively unexamined concept of the restoration of initial conditions. Well, the show Drakean Cosmos would play havoc with the notion of the restoration of initial conditions because what it is saying is that the universe is a, a steadily accreting and self-defining set of interlocking habits and that no, uh, that slices into this uh, waveform interference pattern of habit are therefore necessarily going to be time dependent. In other words, it looks different at each point in its history. It makes it very hard, therefore, to see how in an atmosphere like that ordinary science can be prosecuted at all. So uh, the interest that it holds for me then is that it seems to be a very calm, rational, uh, attentive program of intellectual understanding which leads to the same radical conclusions that an emergence in uh, the core experience of archaism, the psychedelic experience, argues for. In other words, that all our intellectual constructs are in fact built on shifting sands. And all knowledge is provisional at this stage in the epistemic enterprise. It doesn't mean that um, a, a uh, more epistemically grounded knowing is not possible. It merely means that up to this point, it has not occurred. Science's claim to fulfill this function has, is now in serious trouble. It actually has been in some areas since the elaboration of quantum physics in the 20s. But Sheldrake is coming at it not from a realm of extremely arcane mathematical modeling, but in the biological realm with a model which is both simultaneously true to felt experience and confounding to the scientific uh, paradigm as it has been waged since uh, Bacon, essentially. And perhaps the way in which it plays into the psychedelic issue is that we can take the word habit very generally <laughs> and realize uh, that one of the curious things about ourselves as higher animals is our susceptibility to habituations. It, it, I define habituation as unexamined obsessive behavior. <laughs> Seems reasonable. And, and we are, more than any other creature, we seem to fall into behavioral loops of 
television watching, snack consuming, fascist voter <laughs> voting patterns, uh, tasteless tonsorial uh, tendencies, and so forth. Uh, what is it? What precisely? If if you see my notion again to try and unite the psychedelic thing with with what Rupert is doing, my notion of a new model of the psychedelic experience is to call these things morphogenetic field amplifiers and to say, you know, this is why in the presence of a psychedelic uh, experience one can hold an object in their hand and visualize its past states. This is how shamans determine who stole the hen or where the sacred, or who's sleeping with who. Actually, the morphogenetic field, if sufficiently amplified to sufficient clarity, is nothing more or less than a record of the past history of whatever is being examined. So that suddenly, instead of being focused in a kind of uh, atomized present, with a receding past and an anticipated future, we lose our particulate nature as the individual, as meat object, and we enter into ourselves defined as a morphogenetic field, as a, a uh, body of wave mechanically maintained information about past and future states of time. And you may be sure that these theories, like the theory of formative causation, like the theory of relativity, like the theory of Newtonian mechanics, eventually filter down into the realm of everyday experience and common models of ordinary consciousness. And if the morphogenetic field theory or idea was to become empowered as the model for millions and millions of people, then uh, the past and the future would change in their connotation to our existential dilemma. Uh, it is, I think, probably the ultimate legacy of the transition from a particulate to a wave mechanical point of view. It, binds us to the past at the same time that it exercises the terror of the future and it really empowers uh, the notion of Tao. So it is not uh, far removed from the realm of our immediate experience. But how can we preserve the self-evident uh, fact of novelty and still get all the good stuff out of formative causation. I don't know if you like this or not, the similarity, but like the omega point of Tyre de Chardin, yeah. which he sees as the goal or attractor of the entire universe. And the, if there is to be a model of morphogenetic fields, to come back to one of your earlier point, points, it has to be in terms of dynamics in, of some kind. And the interesting thing about modern dynamics is that it's based on the idea of attractors. <coughs> Systems are attracted towards states which, from their point of view, lie in the future. So there are these morphic attractors, which are the basis of the kind of dynamical models, including in chaotic dynamics, that are emerging now. And so that gives the idea, as morphogenetic fields have to have, is the idea of con containing the goal or form or final state of something within themselves. The morphogenetic field of the oak tree contains, in some sense, the form of the full, fully formed oak and draws the growing seedling towards it. This is like the Aristotelian system of final causes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so if the entire nature of morph uh, morphic fields is to have attractors. This is what the, the, and the only way to model them mathematically that we, can, that we have something that hints towards it at the moment is in terms of dynamics, including chaotic dynamics. Um, the idea of non-stable endpoints or dynamic endpoints. And if one has a model of the universe based on those, and if one has also, as one does in this kind of organismic, holistic universe, the idea that the microcosm mirrors the macrocosm, that the part, in some sense, mirrors the whole. So each system, 
in some re- is in some way related to the whole, then the morphic field of the entire universe must have a kind of cosmic attractor from that point of view.